Buongiorno. <laughs> okay, if you've not watched before, I'm Simon. Monica is clutching the camera, and we are painting in France. We run painting holidays here in the south of France. Um, but in this time of lockdown, which I hope you're all keeping safe and well, uh, we are doing a virtual painting holiday for you to watch or take part in. Every week on the Wednesday, we'll be doing a painting. But today, we last week we were in Simi. First of all. Thank you very much everybody who took part in this painting. This is the uh, island, the Greek island of Simi. I said the drawing and everyone's done some fantastic paintings. Check out the Facebook page, Painting in France, for the online gallery. Um, that's good. And then, but like I said, today, today we've moved over to Tuscany. I looked on the map and it says it was, um, here we are, just a close up. We were on the Greek island of Simi, here's Greece right down by the Turkish coast. And what we did, we caught a ferry through the islands, Athens, over land a little bit, and then eventually caught the ferry to Barry over here on the Isle of Wight. No, not the Isle of Wight, sorry. What's Barry? Barry? Barry Island in Wales? <laughs> Barry. Barry, uh, sorry. Barry. Yeah, Barry. Barry. See, and then we're going up the coast. So we're in Tuscany, which is around Florence, all the way around here. Uh, it's a beautiful area for painting. And um, We have a few familiar faces uh, watching. Yes. yes. Um, Cindy Lee, um, Cindy Bass, hi, Cindy. Pam Eden, Dulaf, Margot yes, Koshal, Li oh. Little French House is watching. Good. And Bonsoir, good evening, and um, buenas noches and buenas sera. And um, our Middle Eastern contingent. And the Middle Eastern contingent, excellent. So already we are around the globe. So I think we're going to start, actually I did want to hear a bit earlier, I think we've got a quick look at that one. This was just a very quick sit, just to kind of loosen up. So we'll probably try and do it quite loose in this sort of style. If you notice, I've, I've actually moved the road around a little bit because I thought it, it was just all, all happening on this side. So I've used a little bit of artistic license. Uh, I've even hinted at putting some hills in the background, mountains in the background. And I've just moved the road around a little bit. So I've got the drawing here. And you'll see, yes, so they've got some extra mountains in now. What's wrong with that? And some road. But let's, let's get started. Um, I'll, I'll actually try and imitate the sky we've got here in the, in the picture. Did your um, uh, drawing, that you, is that the drawing you sent everybody? It's more or less. This is handcrafted earlier this afternoon. I did send a tracing of the photograph, I think, to people to, if they wanted to take part, they can transfer that onto watercolour paper and uh, get started. But those, um, I suppose I'm asking, is because they had suddenly those extra hills. Oh yes, but I did draw the extra hills in the pencil drawing as well. We've got quite a, a large contingency here from um, Cassia. There's um, somebody else. Sorry, I just yes. saw somebody. Joe Tomlin from <laughs> San Joe. Francisco. San Francisco. Amanda Johnson has made it. Sandy Hooray. Richardson, oh, her mum has oh, made great. it. Wow. And <laughs> you've got your paints out. Mac and Linda um, have made so it from the UK. You know, it's not compulsory you paint with. What, uh, this video will eventually be reappearing on Facebook and I'll tack it onto YouTube as well. But what I'm going to do, first of all, I've got some, so there's been complaints, there aren't enough close-ups on what we're mixing. I've added, um, I'm going to go for a little bit of, this is cerulean blue. A bit of a firm favourite. Firm favourite. And... Um, do you think it's kind of a, an essential, oh, essential co colour um, for these sort of Mediterranean skies? It is really, it's great, yeah, I, I use it a lot, as you know. Um, but I mean, the, the best thing to do really, if you're not sure, just mix up a few colours, try them out on a bit of scrap paper, and um, then what can possibly go wrong? Okay, let's go. I'm going to try and, um, we've got a few clouds, we've got a few things, let's have a look. I'm going to test it out on my picture. And is that um, wet on dry? This is, yes, wet on dry. I haven't actually wet the paper. Um, normally I would paint the sky and put some wipes and washing clouds in and leave it that. But today, let's have a go. I'm going to try and dab some out. Um, let's have a look. Actually, this is a bit more cobalt, but I might just uh, make it slightly You're making different. it a little bit richer. Yeah, just a little bit of cobalt blue in the mix. And um, Can I just zoom in on... Yeah. The cerulean in comparison to the cerulean yeah. is that one in the cobalt is that the on the top right yeah so it's a slightly warmer blue although funny enough I, i'm not a big fan of cobalt blue i think it's a bit um, a bit english 
But we're in the Mediterranean room. So anyway, I'm going to put this on. Let's have a go. I'm going to just put this on quite... We have the kind of clouds coming this way. and I'm going to Our Uptrack, um, what is it, representative is here. Oh, great. Hello, Andra. Uptrack. Um, I'm just going to put that on. And I'm hoping <laughs> that I can make it a little bit richer. Perhaps a slightly different, a bit more cobalt blue down here, say. Let's have a go. We're going to paint over the over the houses. This is all quite light down here. It's a bit, <laughs> bit wild, but it's it's late in the afternoon here. And we're just going to put that on like that. So I've, I've kept. We're kind of just drying the brush out, fading it out, and I'm going to. So anything goes today, ladies and gentlemen. Anything goes. Nice big sweeps down to about the edge of the building, just touching those distant hills. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try just dabbing the dabbing the sky with a bit of a tissue just to get a few clouds in. I perhaps should have left that a little bit a bit quicker, but I can always let's look. I might just put while well, I'm still doing it. I've got quite a large brush. I think it's a uh, twenty or so, sixteen. Hello, Doha. Doha. Good evening. And I'm just going to put a. Let's make it a little bit stronger up in this corner. There we are. Um, I said we can uh, try all things out. Front. Anything goes. I've just got that kind of nice sweeping thing. That'll do. I think fine. I don't want to get too involved with the sky. Um, that's there. We are. So I've got a clean brush, I'm wiping some in, and I'm just going to dab a little bit of cloud on there. You're, you're dabbing, you're wiping, dabbing, I you're... It's all go tonight, this afternoon, wherever you are, good morning, all morning, wherever you are. And um, that's actually, what I don't like. It's a little bit of a funny edge on there, so I'm just going to retouch that a bit. There we go. And then, I can't remember what I did next now. Um, You touch that, there we go, that's fine. We can leave that, it's going to all fade away and blend away. Then the mountains, once that's dry, I'll put that range of hills in. In the meantime, if I had a step by step, I'd refer to it to see what I did next. Um, I think I'm going to go for the very pale yellow colour. Let's, let's so this is the for the wheat? This is for the wheat, yeah. And actually, I'm going to get a fresh... So this will be a late... Late summer. Indeed, yeah. I'm in um, to in Tuscany. Uh, we've got this sort of slightly harvest yellow colour. I'm going to... Okay, which, which, how I've are you making three, that up? A yellow ochre. Yeah. And I've got a little bit of Naples... Naples yellow by any chance. Naples yellow, it is indeed. A kind of for Italy, it kind seems. Of, you're right, we're, we're near Italy. I think it's, it's only right we should have some Naples yellow in. Um, once again, running out of hands. Let me just... Uh, Want me to oh, hold it? <laughs> we got it. Okay, so I'm going to just. I'm a lady, up. you know. I can multitask. Yes, task. indeed. There we are. I know, don't we? I know. Okay, I'm going to put this. We've got a nice sweep of this kind of shape here. And I'm just going to keep. Oh, look at where that come from. I think it's a dead fly. Oh, Vincent van Gogh would have had the same problem. But it's actually quite fortuitous because you kind of got that shadow oh, sitting in that top right-hand yeah. corner. I don't know where that came from. This is live because now, of course, what's happening is it's taking over. I'm just going to dab it a little bit. I'll paint over that. Um, let's get. So we've got a yeah, we've got a yellow oak with a bit of let's have a bit of cadmium yellow as well. That's just to freshen up a little bit. What I'm trying to do is just get a nice big sweep of uh, autumn harvest colour going on here. And I'll, I'm going to do the same on the other side, actually, because it... Uh, Even though the shot is a bit browner. It's a bit browner. It looks like a bit, they've done the harvesting and now they've burnt it all off. And I think... Um, let's have a little bit of... So it's, while it's damp, you see, you can just add some darker colours. I've got, like I said, a little bit of um, yellow ochre there. This will all blend in quite nicely. There's a little bit of... Perhaps let's go mad and put a little bit of, a little bit of burnt sienna... Just, I mean, very little, just enough to... So it's literally just a tinge of burnt sienna, yeah, I mean. Just, just, yeah, that's quite nice, isn't it? Yeah. Just a little bit of burnt sienna and then maybe around here. So you're just hinting at those sort of yeah. shadows, those undulations in the... That's it, yeah. So I'm just going to... 
Let's put a little bit of... I'm trying to keep a little bit of light in there, a little bit of a... Uh, but I'm not quite sure what to do with the, the, uh, the bright red down there, but we'll cross that bridge maybe later. Um, good. So... I think what we'll do is perhaps go back to those hills now. I'm taking a slightly smaller brush. Um, this is a number 12. This is an imitation sable round. Just trying them all out this afternoon. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of the sky colour with a touch of Payne's grey. Here we go. I shouldn't mix these early. Really. So it's not, it's just distant hills. We don't want them too, too dark. So I'm just gonna, yeah, what, put that in here. What you wanna do is have it go over the, so you can paint over the trees, but don't come down to yellow because that'll probably still be wet. And what I'm gonna do is kind of yeah. like this scene here. I'm just gonna almost draw in at some diagonals, just hint at some different shapes going on down to the edge of the house, leaving a little gap there, and then the same on, on that side. So you see, just slightly sharper. If, if you'd painted those hills on while the sky was still wet, the hills would have become the sky. The hills would have been alive. But anyway, no, this is it. So there we are, just, um, we're, gonna add another, we're gonna add another layer, sort of more intense layer. On there. But basically, if you can look at this, we've got those hills there. I don't know if you can see, just very distant hills there, which is kind of what I'm going to try and suggest here. Yeah. So those are going in. We'll, but we'll let that dry a bit now. And I think we'll come back to uh, Naples Yellow. I'm going to put the path colour in and then put the green in eventually. So let's have a look. Um, this is quite, yeah, this is quite pale. Pale Naples yellow. Just Eric Smith has joined us. Hi, and, Eric. Hi. And Kevin Ellsmore. Kevin is there as well. A few uh, more from the UK. The weather's okay over there. I bet it's very good. Um, it's been hot here today, isn't it? What's the temperature been? I don't know. I haven't been outside. <laughs> I haven't been outside. I've been grafting away. Um, so I'm just going to leave it like that, I think. And Graham London as well. Graham, all right, mate? From yeah. Worcester. So there we are. That's oh, right, actually. The edge of the trees there. What, what I've missed and what you may not have missed is what's a, what's a key part of this picture, that lovely curve here, and then the tree is just coming down to it. So theoretically, my trees should just be touching the yellow. But um, as you can see, I've just gone over that a little bit. But this is all about making amends on the move. So I think what will be next, I'm gonna put one there. I'm gonna put a little bit of green Green, yeah. Can you find the chair right? Yeah. I've got a little bit of sap green to add in to those hills just at the back, almost like just washing them on. Quite. It's going to be another layer, but I just wanted to add a little bit of colour in there, so it's not just the blue. It's very pale sap green. There we go. And that's coming up quite nicely. Put a bit more texture in there later on. So I hope this is more making sense. Like I said, uh, you'll be able to uh, watch the video again and play it back at your leisure with a bottle of wine. Tuscan wine. A bit of Chianti, of course. Chianti. Chianti. Yeah. Or a nice Barolo. A nice Barolo. Yeah. Um, so while that's drying away there, that's, we'll just leave that. We'll be, we'll be going home early, I think, because this is going to be a very quick one to do. Theoretically. What? Well, every um, now and then, one wants, has to do a kick, have a quickie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> carrying on, carrying on. The show must go on. I've got a, okay, I've got a bit more of that yellow oak. I'm going to do the building now, just the basic building <laughs> colour. The, uh, the yellow oak and a little bit of, um, oh, a little bit of burnt sienna, I think. And I'm just going to put that on pretty well all over there. Pops over the roof as well. Is that down there. brown enough? Ooh. <laughs> it will be. Now the roof is going to be, I'll do the roof again, but I just wanted to get 
Let's have a little bit of um, a bit more red in down there. Just pretend. So while that's damp, so you can add a little bit of burnt sienna to your yellow elka burnt sienna mix. That's just. Uh, I've been told it's 26 in the shade today in in certain well, areas in the UK. Well, there we are. Who needs to go to Tuskegee when you got that kind of weather? We can't go there anyway. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, oh, I should have painted over there. Oh. Um, not to worry. I think that's. I'm going to actually. I want to do some more of those distant hills before I start doing any more in the foreground. So I'm going to get the hair dryer and speed things up a bit. Here we are. Oh, it's kind of but cowboy today, hey now. But cowboy today. But cowboy. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> Oh, bit, bit quick, bit fast. The Fast and the Furious. Alright, here we go, Gaga. Right, let's go. Um, so, if you look, see what I've done. Um, I've kind of got these hills there now. But what I did, I put another kind of layer in the middle distance, just with almost drawing that in. I'm going to do that now, and that'll just sharpen that line up as a bit as well. I think. I'm not sure what, what kind of I use. I think it'll be, let's go for it, a little bit of Payne's Grey. No, sorry, sap green. And we'll have some. See, I'm going to just wait. I'm going to ignore you for a second. Not that oh. beautiful dog again. I've got oh. a spaniel who's standing next to me. Did, oh. did we remember to feed her? Don't mention the feeding. Oh. No, we didn't. That's why. Yeah. We've got a patient spaniel issue. We yeah. haven't fed her a dinner yet. There we are. Okay, we will soon. That's why I've got to go as quick as I can. I've added a little bit of sap green and cobalt blue. I repeat, sap green and cobalt blue, just to give a little bit of something going on in the middle there. Um, so this is. I'm just going to introduce like another another range of hills to get a bit more. Uh, I think it could be a bit blue. I'm going to add a bit more. It's quite dark, isn't it? Well, that, that's not so, I wanted to make it a bit bluer, really. Okay. Um, that'll fade away. This is like, it's quite dark, isn't it? Just carry on, as though nothing's meant to go wrong, which is going to be fine. I'm going to dabble that a little bit. So, and what I'll do, I will take this opportunity to just sharpen that line down a bit. Uh, yeah. So I'm just, if you see what I mean, I'm just kind of getting that, that shape of that field of wheat, corn, wheat, I should imagine. Wheat. I'm just, there we are, just hinting at some shapes. That will fade away, fear not, and then I'm going to put the same kind of hills, yeah, they'll be running, you know, just sort of in the background. I'm almost going to draw it in so you get that, this sort of field, field effect. And then, with a, with a damp brush, I'm just going to soften that in a bit. There we go. But you, it's nice to have a little bit of texture, just hinting at different kind of fields and, and open areas. But you don't want it all one colour, so I think that's, that'll be fine. Oh, I don't know, it looks quite strong, doesn't it? Stop yawning already. She's only, we've only been painting for 10 minutes. I know, but I only slept for three hours oh, last night. Oh, yeah, right, let me off that. Um, so I, I'm hoping that, that will fade back a little bit, because looking at them now, they're a little bit too strong. But the idea is, look, here's what we did earlier, is to get that kind of gradation. Distant hills, middle hills, and then foreground. It just helps to give that aerial perspective. Vital part of any equation. Um, and one of those themes that you will be right, covering off on your Zoom classes. Yes, indeed. Yeah, we'll just a uh, quick, quick plug of the Zoom classes, or shall I just... Carry on. Um, I'll just put a little bit of slightly smaller brush again. I've gone back to, I'm not quite sure what size this is, but slightly smaller. It's one of the uh, travel brushes. I'm going to put a little bit of burnt sienna and yellow ochre to put the... A little bit of roof colour on. So that's once again deep breath and then just like carefully carefully paint that in. There we go. 
you think? Is that okay? It looks fine. I'm just worried it's going to run. Run all oh, quick. Okay, let's just. I'm just going to do this kind of thing. I might be able to check that again. I'm going to quickly dab my brush. This is one of the perils of working vertically. But there we are. So just with a damp, a clean damp brush, I just ran the brush along the edge. And we'll come back to that and add a bit of texture and shadow. It looks a little bit sort of, it's like a pork pie at the moment, but um, it'll, it'll work out fine. It'll a pork pie? Fine. What do your pork pies look <laughs> like? Well, you know, sort of crossed on the top and a bit of a side. <laughs> right, where are we? Okay, I've got an urge to put a little bit more light and shade in here, actually. Although, maybe you can just run some sap green. Yes, let's do that. Sap green, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again. Medium-sized brush, which one is this? Uh, I've gone back to number 12. A large dollop of sap green. And what I'm gonna do is this kind of, what I wanna try to do is get, just get the green shape around, but leaving the track there as paint's gray. This will be the challenge. So what did I do last time? Um, okay, so you've got, got like, um, Basically, yeah, that kind of comes round like that. That can be quite, quite a it's, We'll work on that. But the key thing is, the key thing in here, ladies and gentlemen, is to keep that, that little track in the middle. So there's one. There we go. So that's one side left there. And then I'm just going to... What's nice is that path... You want to go down that path to the to the to the, to the house, don't you? You do. It takes you in. So there we are. I'm just going to. Okay, then you can ride. You can drive your little Piaggio in there, a three wheeler with a dog in As the back. As they they welcome us in for a, a glass of uh, exactly yeah. Pinot Grigio and oh, um, yes. and um, antipasta. Uh, yeah, that sounds good, doesn't it? That sounds good. Now, um, so we've got that kind of thing. I'm just going to keep it quite, quite vague at the moment. But as you can see, we've got the kind of basic tones going in. We've got the hint of sky, some distant hills, the first wash of colour on this uh, wheat here. And here's uh, grassy bits around the path. Um, I'll just leave that for now, I think. But what we'll do next because this is all dry, I want to put a little slightly stronger colour in. Medium brush again. Slightly stronger colour, maybe a bit of that roof colour, that would sort of balance out, wouldn't it? Um, but let's try uh, just going. It's almost a couple of courageous brush strokes is what you need. Um, with um, yellow ochre and a bit of, bit of burnt sienna. Like I said, it's almost a sort of dry brush thing going on here. Um, watch me. It's <laughs> I'm shaking. This could still all go horribly wrong. I'm just going to put a little bit of... Oh, let's try it from, from this side. That's quite nice. Yeah. Ooh. It's a little bit too dry. But there we go. I think it's going to be... You've got to just take a deep breath and, and put these in. There we go. Again, they'll soften off a little they'll bit, won't they? You're right. Yeah, listen to Monica. She's... Dead right there, that's it. Um, then, I'm pass on this side as well. See, I'm, be I'm becoming a um, an armchair, what they call an armchair watercolour artist. Armchair watercolour, that's all right. Or, is it, or is, just, is it just an art critic? They're, them who don't <laughs> oh, know, but to criticise. Right. Yeah, I'm just, you don't want the brush too wet, really. It's quite nice to have a, almost like side of your brush, just to do a little something like that. You see, you get a nice bit of texture. We're, we're doing loose here this evening, aren't we? Loose. Yeah. Loose is the plan. Evidently. And, um, that's, now we've just gone into, it's looking a bit stripy from here. So I'm going to just plus blend that a little bit. We're going to put a bit of texture on there. Oh, that's better. That's quite nice. So now you see, it was looking a bit stripy, but I think now it's um, looking stripy, but bigger. Bigger stripes. I get the feeling with watercolour is that you... Just pretend that they like little wild flowers or something on the verge. Yeah. What are you on about? <laughs> <laughs> little wild flowers I, on the verge. I was, I was trying on the to. The verge of what? Madness? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was trying to post rationalise uh, for you. Okay, yeah. Let's see what you did there. 
Uh, now I think we will um, come for some shadows under the under the ar under the arches on the side of the house there, and then the trees will come on top of it. Then we'll start adding some detail in the foreground. But look, oh, that's lovely. It's like little little flowers there, isn't it, darling? <laughs> so, we. It is. Perhaps we just have to stick a coat under the back of your shirt to uh, hang it to the ceiling. Okay, I'm going to go for a slight smaller brush back to the. I'll just call Millie over. She That's can do it. the camera work today. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to add, mix up a little kind of shadow colour. We've got a little bit of uh, trusted friend, Payne's grey. I hear the purists spitting on the floor. I know you can mix up greys, but hey, we're up against the clock here. I've got a little bit of magenta, I think it is. Yeah, I think it's magenta and grey. And we are just trying to get a slightly warm grey. That's too red. How about that? So I've got um, zoom in. Let's try that. And I'm going to just run. It's uh, got a nice little sort of shadow. Just all the way across there. You could probably just run a little. Oh. Second, I'll put an angle. That's okay. That's okay. That's all right. We'll leave that. We're going to come back and put some windows in later on. Um, while I've got this mixer, I'm going to take a deep breath and let's add some sh shadow. It's a little bit watery. I'm just trying to get a little bit of the hint of this kind of shadow in the background. Just kind of running like so down here. Yeah. So, like so it gives there. you the edge of the wheat to make it the feel the like wheat, there's some yeah, height to it. Yes. Um, Otherwise it looks like it's just been harvested. Yes. Actually, Eric put me onto a, a very good video last week um, about all about sort of hue and saturation and the varying um, strengths and colours within shadows. Um, but today we're keeping it simple. I've just got that, like I said, a little bit of um, magenta and Payne's grey. This is all kind of running pretty wild, but we'll just do our best. It's all... It, we're probably working a bit quickly. I think you take your time, pour another glass of wine, another coffee, and then just add that in. I'm just going to do that. Let's pretend that's just going around there. Um, now what else we've got? We've got, what's quite nice is they've got a few sort of shadows. If you look at this one down here, um, what's what's pretty good is you've got that nice sort of late afternoon sunshine going across the road and across here. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to pretend it's a bit later in the afternoon. I'm going to, oh, what we've got is some shadows up by the, those trees, you see. So I'm just going to pop. Let's put that across there. It's best to just experiment with the, the thickness of your paint because that's a little bit watery, but it's... I'm just going to do that kind of thing. People are going, the man's a fool, what's he doing? But everything's under control. I'm just going to put a little bit of um, something down here, look. And then um, let's, let's run some, a little bit more shadow across here, just quite loosely. Can't really see what we're doing. <laughs> um, Am I in your way? That's okay, it's all right. I want to leave a little bit of light area there, if I can, because that kind of coincides. Let's have a look. What you generally find is that sort of shadow gone. Let's pretend that's just going across there. That's fine. I'm just going to add a couple of big brush strokes across here. Just to kind of break, we're just sort of breaking out of the path, I can see, because of what you've got. It sort of breaks that stripiness so that you yeah, get sort of coming towards you, doesn't a, it? A little bit of something going on the edge of, the, on of the that edge one of as well. But you don't want to get too bogged down in um, details if you can. I don't want to get it too red. <laughs> There's a danger of just ending up with lots of stripes going that way. Um, I'm going to perhaps come back. Let me just stand back and look at that. Stand back now and again, check your paintings out. This is all bleeding quite interestingly into the. Um, the wheat, not quite the plan. Uh, that's looking fine. Maybe just a bit. I think I have a little bit more green there. Really. 
Another one of our um, followers stateside have joined us, Fred from Chicago. Fred from Chicago. Hi, Fred from Chicago. Well, where have you been? Well, we just got a good to have you on board. Uh, yeah, let's just do a little recap. Um, basically, where were we? This is the... Um, it gives people a bit of time to catch up exactly, if they're trying yeah. to paint along. This was, um, this was the drawing that I sent out, darling, you were asking. Right, yeah. So that was right. I did add a few little extra mountains in and this swoosh of road um, and the house and so on. So then what we did, some sweeping gestures across the sky, some sort of pale background colours in, in the wheat here, we're adding a little bit of yellow on this side as well because it's all looking a bit burnt out. Did the Destin Hills, slightly blue, slightly grey with a little bit of sap green just washing there to hint at some greenery there too. Um, this this is going. These are great. This sort of um, style here. See, it's not flat. It's just different things going on, isn't it? It's a nuanced colour. Nuanced colour, yes, indeed. And then probably slightly overdid the the next layer, but I might soften those back. I might get away with that. And then add a few more sort of gestures of uh, colour into here. And I'm just working along with a little bit of Payne's grey and magenta, just kind of hinting a little. Uh, shadow on the edge of the corn and the wheat with perhaps a few little things going across the road. I might add a little bit more because it's quite flat at the moment, isn't it? But with watercolour, it's, it's quite easy to go in there and add a few more things here and there. But it's a nightmare to try and get out. This is not oil painting or acrylic painting. Let me warn you, ladies and gentlemen, this is pretty much just go steady and kind of think where you want to put your, your shadows. I mean, in many ways, this is... Better, did I hear someone say? Now this was a quick sketch I did for uh, earlier on in the afternoon. And it really does help. If you're going to do a big painting, um, I would have perhaps taken longer to do this. But if you're doing a painting where you have got and you want to take longer, you know, do a little picture first and um, have a look, have a go at it, see what colours work, what don't, and things like that. Um, I like the colours here. I like the sky. <laughs> okay. How are we doing? We are now on to that. What I'm going to do, I think, is go to the trees. Um, I'm going to get a slightly smaller brush again. Um, let's go for these. No, let's keep it medium. The idea is, they say, think of the brush you're going to use and then go for the next one up to keep it sort of slightly looser in technique. But I've got a good brush full of sap green here. Now what I'm going to do is, is run quickly through these trees and then go in with some shadow later on. Um, have we got time for that, do you think? What? All those trees? Or should I just do a few over here? Um, I have no idea. Let me just look at my... Um, well, I'll start anyway. I generally start by running a little bird, just carefully putting a little vertical line 1833, in. darling. 1833, okay. I'll just do... I won't do all of them then. I'll come there from there to the house. So on this one, you you seem to be painting down rather than up. Uh, that's right. I, yeah, I have. It's, I'm just kind of going... Let me... Can you come around I'm going to come way? around to see... I'm trying kind to... of positioning the trees. I've got them in the drawing. I'm just putting a little bit of a vertical line in. Right. And then I can happily go dabbing away. Yeah, like I said, it is actually better from below. Um, but these are quite sort of... Sorry, I know this is a slightly obscure angle, but I'm just trying to really get the detail of Simon yeah, that's... putting these. Your paint is really quite thick at this stage, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's it, now in the painting, your paint is getting thicker because you want to be painting over the, the distant hills in the background. Um, likewise here, I want to go over the buildings, so I'm going to just literally do... Take a deep breath and put some lines in it. We're going to go... Before these dry out, I'm going to go in with a with a bit of hooker's green, and uh, yes, that's all in front of it. Now. Not to worry, I think that's just where. If you ha if you can take the the edge of the wheat to where the trees are without going beyond them, there will be bonus points for that. Um, so I'm just going to go you know, like that. Is that. How's that filming looking? Spectacular. Thank you. This would be impossible without um, Monica's handy camera work, believe me. 
you'd have one, one camera about 10 yards away on a tripod. But this way you get to see the master at work. Well, something like that. <laughs> no comment, darling. I'm flabbergasted. Flabbergasted. Your, your tree technique has just left me. Oh, it really? Oh, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah, we could have, you see, we could have had a little bit of white, almost like a lime green in there, because if you look, if you'd like to come over this one, you, you get this quite intense light green there, which is, kind of stands out away from the thing. We might just, it might just work. We might just be fine with doing what we're doing. Oh, there are one or two there that look like clay. They've what? not got long left in this world. I think they, they need to um, have word of the gardener. That's for sure. Um, but I was, it was interesting. I was looking for Tuscan villas, Tuscan farmhouses on the internet. And um, we've done a few paintings over the years. This is not one that we've actually visited, is it? It, it isn't. But we will. We will. In fact, once this goes viral, they'll be in touch and inviting us down to come up for a painting on me. So it's going to be good. But um, we reckon it's probably the most photographed building no, in Italy, I, isn't I'm it? I'm not sure if it's quite this one, but there is definitely one which appears in a thousand, thousand photographs. Um, wallpaper, you know, this is Tuscany kind of uh, pictures. And um, they, hopefully, I hope they've made a lot of money keeping it, keeping it together to allow photographers and drone pilots to uh, get those pictures. Let's have a little, uh, there's a few little, um, I won't go all around there, but yeah, basically I'm, I'm putting um, quite a thick sap green on just a kind of base color, and actually in the background, uh, you've got a few little, little trees there as well. I quite like having a little cap here in there, see, just so it hints. A little bit more shadow, that's gonna go there, that'll do. You can, you can always add more foliage into a picture, but it's almost impossible to get it out. But now those are looking fine there. And while they're still a little bit damp, I'm going to give a little bit of dark green, little hooker's green now. Hooker's green. Named there. after Al? Named after William Hooker, the fine Victorian, probably explorer. Botanical a, artist. Oh, botanical artist. Botanical artist. Well, that would probably have meant Trekking through jungles and in those days, wild probably zones yes. With um, a team of natives carrying all his easels and going over. Um, okay, so now that's probably still a little bit wet. I'm going. To, this might you might have to get off the off the bed. And then, off my bed. And uh, here we go. Ah, oh, that's it. Um, it's interesting. I was looking at a, a, a watercolor book this afternoon, just looking for some ideas and how people work and. Um, I've realised quite a lot of artists do uh, specialise in and mix their colours from their palette. And we're going to be doing this, aren't we? we I'm going to be... Well, uh, you're doing a lesson on it, aren't you? Yeah, as in from next Thursday, about the same, same late afternoon, late afternoon Thursday. Same time, isn't it? Six o'clock. early shift Friday, we're going to be doing Zoom classes... Um, as, as well as these lives on Wednesday um, and you can sign up and we're going to be doing about two or three hours um, pretty focused work. We did one test one the other day and that worked out well and taking you through a picture but there'll be more talk about techniques, what to look out for and it's just going to be two, two and a half hours so we And kind of focusing potentially sometimes on a either specific technique or a specific subject exactly. isn't it? Well, we, I'm actually going to put a trouble course, areas create a course together, so we can we can really build through the whole uh, itinerary, touching on various techniques. There's going to be obviously perspective. There's going to be light and shade, landscapes, water, streams, rivers, lakes, open sea. Um, so we're going to be touching on all sorts. It'll be themed, and we'll be able to lead you through these courses. And one of them has one of them got to do with these trees. Oh, one of them has got to colours, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, because I tend to be a little bit lazy and just use uh, sap green and hooker's green. I hear you cry, yes, we know that. Um, which is great for instance, sort of, especially when I sort of travel journal, uh, it's good. But there's obviously a lot of depth of green you can add by adding some blues to it or going the other way, adding some yellows to it. Well, so we'll be talking through all this. But well. you do tend, even though you use a couple of basic greens, you add 
blues, depending on what colours you're using, you often add a bit of blue or you add a it's bit true. of... It's true, yeah. I mean, this this now, um, it's, you know, these trees are obviously quite richly dark in the, in the sun on the right-hand side. I'm just seeing... I might get away with just using the hooky screen, but I may have to add a little bit of um, probably ultramarine just to give it a little extra intensity. Um, but you've got an idea. So what's happening here, you can see we're putting um, a kind of shadow in on one side and, and here and there there's actually a little cast shadow on the tree. Um, but it, by just giving that shadow on the one side, it gives that a nice sort of late afternoon sunlight feeling. So important in the pictures. I think a lot of people you know, put, put very nice pictures together, uh, but will often um, not really concentrate on where the light and shade and shadows come from. I mean, um, last week was a good example. I mean, uh, we, we did the street scene in, in Simi. Q picture. And um, what you have here, of course, is the this bright sunlight and then the kind of cast shadow from the, the Bourbonvillier. And that, that quite key line coming across there, the sharper the line, that sort of gives the impression of a, a bright sunlight rather than hazy sunlight. But these are things you can learn, ladies and gentlemen. Probably. And I suppose also it depends on, um, like you were saying, this is you're kind of trying to pretend this is a slightly later afternoon, so you've got these long cast shadows, That's haven't right. you? When you start to get to know your way around a little bit, you'll, you'll, you know, I, I've had people kind of, it's been great people to come back after we've done doing some workshops and we've perhaps been talking about light and shade and clouds and so on. And they've gone, this is amazing. I look, I look for light and shade now, you know, I'm actually aware of where the shadows are. And once you start to grasp that, once that starts to sink in, then you can almost also, you can just make your paintings up. You can think, okay, I like that painting, but I'm going to make it early morning or even later afternoon. Uh, you have that, you have that knowledge. But it's also what makes a painting feel it's real, really isn't cool. it? Yeah. <laughs> is is when people get their light or shadows where some are being cast from one direction and others are being cast from another direction. Yeah. It just, it doesn't look right. Exactly, yes. That's a good observation. Yeah, so the, the, it's important to have that in mind, which is where that little sketch, come, colour sketch comes in, actually. Um, right, okay, so what I've got, you've got the idea here. Yeah, nice sort of fresh green to begin with. You could probably get away with adding a little bit of lime green or, or yellow, cadmium yellow into that green to make it really pop out. I mean, just an observation, what's quite interesting mm. is even on those simple shapes of those trees, you've essentially only used two colours. That's but right. But those have really, are popping out of the picture so no, much more than those that haven't got well, the shadow on it. Yes, yes it is. That's a good way, that's a good way of looking at it. Yeah, so this is, you can see, here's some we've started and uh, we're just sort of putting more into there. Um, what I've got as well now, I've got a little bit of that shadow colour, a little bit stronger, a bit more Payne's Which Grey. Which are This is Payne's Grey with a little bit of that magenta. I'm just going to... It always bothers me that that oh. is called magenta. Because for me, magenta, I'm used to what we use as graphic design colours. Yeah. And magenta is literally bright pink. That's what I know. Like when you use it yes. in printing, cyan, yeah. which is basically almost like your... That kind of cerulean yeah. or cobalt blue. Oh, that's a good point. Well, there's a magenta, black and yellow is, and you make all your colours up with those three colours in four colour yeah. process. Um, I will look into it more, but there are a lot of variations on magenta. I mean, I've, I've tried to get, get it narrowed down. I think this is one they call, I believe, if I can say it properly, Queena Credon Magenta. Is it, is that dark? But I've also got others. In fact, I've got a whole tin of different ones I've been trying out. That's always a good thing to do as well. If you're not sure what colours you like, I mean, I'm going to post up what colours we've been using here. Um, but it's always good to, yeah, buy the odd tube and try it out. See what, um, see what works well. You might, uh, I mean, also, right. just from your perspective, yeah. do you, because you very seldom use pans, the only time you t t seem to use paint, like boxes of watercolour, yeah is when you're traveling. And I've noticed even less now when you travel, you often carry yeah. just a little small... I'll just carry them. I'm just going to put these on the window. Uh, you're in the light. Huh? Sorry. Or is that in the way? Um, I was just standing to the side just now. Okay. That's cool. 
I'm just, that's almost a little bit too strong. You don't want it pitch black. Um, I'm just going to hint at a few, a few windows here. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, even that, I quite often take uh, this kind of palette with the colours mixed in. And sometimes I'll just put cling film over it or I'll put it into a plastic bag. And then the next day you can start up. Um, yes, of course, there's uh, some great combinations with, um, with lids and, and so on, uh, which, which work well too. It's kind of trying things out, you know. Mm. I did have that travel palette which folds up, but the whole thing just sort of melted into each other. All the colours were like, oh my God. You've got to really just, yeah, just try things out and uh, don't try them out on your first trip and put all your paints into your, into your best clothes in, the, in your suitcase. Um, how we do? Let's do a bit of that. So yeah, you can kind of build that up. And what I might do is put a little bit of line work in there. That's yeah, that's going okay. Let's look. Let's look you back to this you one. put a little bit more line work in your or darker so in your roof. Yeah, that's true. Okay, well I've got that. It's looking a little right. Ooh, okay, I was going to think I could uh, I could go home early, but all right, I've got this kind of slightly. Thin uh, shadow colour that will kind of blend in. I'm just going to try and try and look at the perspective on the roof. Um, it's, it's almost classic, sort of straight on perspective, is really, yeah, isn't it's, it? It's almost drawn correctly, but um, there we go. So that's got that. It's got some shadows there. I think what, I'm, what I need, because these are kind of in the field, I'm just going to put a little bit of shadow. Uh, like here as well, just sort of... Because there's a bit of shadow on the left-hand side there, isn't there? Yeah. yeah anyway, let's have a look at that. Hi, Let's... Moose. And he's got that Hi, little Millie Moose. Say, she's tapping her watch, saying there are people... We're about 15 minutes late with her dinner, just so that you don't think that we don't feed her at all. We normally feed her at about so quarter he, past... He's in the F word. Quarter um, past half past five, and we're, so we're running a little bit over. But now, okay, what have we got? We've got that, 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 that. That's, that's, that's kind of taking shape. I would probably wash a little bit of slightly warmer... Oof, look at that, that's green. Oh, well. That's well, you've now got a little, um, little, little bit of border of plants there. What I'll do, I'll just put a little bit of um, something in there. In fact, I think in the actual picture there are some more, there's some more green really, so I'm going to put a little bit of, it's very kind of pale, just sort of pale sap green, not too blue, just a little bit of... So Eric has said uh, different companies produce different colours using the same pigment number. Oh, right, yes. Oh, sorry, I'm yeah. tapping the screen to see more and it's just not giving me the option. Yeah, yeah. to see that. So, I would say if the pigment says B PB thirty five, the color would be the same whatever country you purchase oh. the paint, but it is not. Yeah, look, I mean, yeah. color is also it's 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 color is divisive. I would say divisive, because yeah. well, it is because we all see color slightly differently. Is that as well? Yeah, and. You know, it's, I think it's, it's probably almost impossible for one company to another com com uh, company because they produce their paints slightly differently. So unless there was a formula out there that was literally posted saying that every, say, cyan blue had to be X amount of pigment versus X amount of what, it's almost impossible. Yeah, I think so. I think I've, I've definitely bought tubes of paint, let's say, cobalt blue um, to try out different brands and they do vary not only in I mean the colours are often close but the, the intensity of the colour will often vary but it's also because some brands are known for putting depending on how much you pay for your colours some that have got does, more pigment in as well than others play a part as well. um, I'm just going to put a little hint of something in this path just going to break it up a little bit just sort of I don't want to do too much. I, know, I think I'm just about to do too much. But, but stop. I'm, stop, okay. 
I mean, this is kind of vague here. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm just going to dry that off. Get the machine out. So we've got a feeling these trees are going to start running down the paper, which would be uh, a disaster. Your trusty pencil. Here we go, the watercolour pencil. This is the uh, Faber Castell Albrecht Dura Black Soft Crayon number 199 for those who are writing notes. Um, and what I would do, I'm, I'm going to probably do a little bit more work on this uh, later, um, so I'll put the finished thing up um, tomorrow or I'll get it on to the end of the, the video. But I, I would probably, yeah, just sort of break this. You don't want to draw. Seen some some of you putting quite sort of fit a lot of line ink line work. I, I kind of steer away from that in, the, in this kind of style. I just want to put a little bit of um, um you know, there's almost just some stones, almost just in the foreground, sort of breaking that up a little bit. Some pebbles there. You see, eventually I might put a little bit more detail in. Nikki um, from yeah. Alderney is trying to watch. She said her video goes off and on all oh. the time. Nikki, it, it could be a mixture. It, it, you know, it's, um, it's possibly your internet, unfortunately. Um, and at times it's ours. So. We do our best. We do our best. Sorry. Be, uh... It's a very unflattering angle of you, darling. Oh, sorry. Okay, well. I no, like I just, I just, caught, no, I just <laughs> caught the edge of you and you were looking a little. <laughs> Roman, it's my Roman nose. It's sort of appropriate. Yeah, no? Okay, so let's have a look at that. What I we've gone from the blue sky and light washes of colour across the fields here, strengthen those up as we've as that each layer is dried. I've started to add some detail into the house. You can carry on adding a little patchwork of bricks if you like, but I wouldn't get too bogged down. That may be a little bit flat, and then the trees can slowly start to come to life as well. It's maybe even more. I'm looking at this. There could be some nice little, uh, little few more little trees on either side. That's in the background, but I think I'll I'll going to continue that. But I'm going to say that that will do for today. I think, otherwise um, people will be uh, here all night. And thank you very much for taking part. And don't forget, what's not to forget, darling? I don't know. <laughs> all right, I was looking for you. Where's, um, the, where's the auto screen? <laughs> Probably again. If anybody wants to join the Zoom classes, um, send us a PM. A private message or if you've got our email address send us a message and we yep. can send you additional information if you're looking for it exactly i put a post up on facebook earlier this afternoon and sent some information out in the newsletter and we'll have more details of that next week uh, for an exciting itinerary to help you improve your drawing and painting and to help feed the starving artist and help feed the starving <laughs> artist so where's me hang on yeah it's looking bad <laughs> we're down to our last three three euros Four euros. Oh, we're all right. Four euros. Right. Where are we going tonight, darling? <laughs> we know where's open. <laughs> anyway, thanks guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, if you've done a painting now, fantastic. I know Martin, if he's watching. Normally, he is. He's, he's saying thanks again. Got one already popping up on the screen before I've even finished talking, which is quite amazing. Uh, but take your time. Perhaps have a go over the weekend or some other time. It'd be great to see how you get on. I'll just I'll happily give you a little feedback. And lovely to see a lot of familiar faces again. Absolutely, yeah. And apologies once again for the intermittent sound and service. We are still waiting for the proper cable to link the phone with this uh, microphone. Um, I'm going to chase them tonight, or maybe I'm going to reorder it. So hopefully next week we'll be sounding better. But anyway, for the time being, uh, arrivederci. Bye for now. Bye, guys. <laughs>